14 to 17 as a HOD in pharmaceutics department. Later he joined in plant pharma as a research scientist. Later in Indian Immunological Limited as a master manager. Now currently working in biological E. Limited, limited as a deputy manager, manager in formulation development. development. During, During his professional, professional career, career, he has filed, he has filed a patent on oral disintegrating disc and he wrote, and he wrote a book manual, manual on biopharmaceutics and clinical pharmacokinetics. And, and he conducted a number of national, national and international conference, conference national and international conference under the under department of biotechnology as a DPT. In the government of India, India and he acted as an organizing secretary for that. And he, and he conducted international, international conference in advanced in biopolymers drug delivery system. And he, and he acted as a convener for ACT sponsored seminar, seminar in Pharma Transfer 2011. Emerging, emerging novel, novel trends in drug delivery system. During, during his professional research, research he published, he published about 20 plus, 20 plus research, research articles, articles both, both research and reviews in highly indexed journals. With this short, short introduction, introduction, I introduce our, our today's speaker, Dr. Dr. V. Ravishankar, sir. Sir, we, we hearty, hearty welcome, welcome you to our, our ACT sponsored continuous, continuous education series, sir. Over, Over to, to Dr. Dr. V. Ravishankar. Good morning to everyone. Yes. Uh, my screen is visible to you people. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Sir, audible. audible. Yeah, okay. No issue. Okay. So, today I am going to present an uh, uh, important topic on DDCs. Yes, uh, first of all, I want to thank you for inviting me as a plenary uh, session speaker. And I am thankful to ACD and the Minister of uh, uh, human resources for uh, keeping this innovative topics and, uh, so that it can able to helpful for the some of the students at least so they can able to increase their uh, knowledge with respect to the what is actually important and how it is uh, useful in their uh, career prospects. Okay. This is DDC is so generally it is an upcoming topic. So this is uh, my topic is impact of recent innovations in DDCs. DDCs are nothing but drug device population products in vaccine as well as pharmaceuticals and how it is going to impact the vaccines and vaccines and as well as pharmaceuticals. So in the first screen you can see there are some things. Can any one of the students can able to tell me what are these things? Have you seen these type of injectables in the market? Anyone? Even from the students or even any of the of recent innovations and DDCs? DDCs are nothing but have you seen this type of things in vaccine as well as pharmaceuticals and how it is going to impact the vaccines and vaccines and, vaccines and as well as pharmaceuticals. So in the, the first, first one, what is here is, 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 is refilling one of the students can help us tell me what are the second things. one is have you seen Aaron? this type of uh, uh, you have a liquid tables in the market, market but there is a passion of a minute right? students the third one is a even is a fact of the research innovations and analysis analysis are nothing but the books you can see this type of things in back and as well as by memory you can see how it is going to be in fact these are all the barrels the vaccines and vaccines and as well as nowadays so most of the injections. So in the first one, what is here is different. Second one, students can tell me different. Second one is different. Third one is different. Fourth one is different. Fifth one is different. Sixth one is different. Seventh one is different. Eighth one is different. Ninth one is different. Tenth one is different. Eleventh one is different. Twelfth one is different. Thirteenth one is different. Fourteenth one is different. Fifteenth one is different. Sixteenth one is different. Seventeenth one is different. Eighteenth one is different. Nineteenth one is different. Twentieth one is different. Twenty-first one is different. Twenty-second one is different. Twenty-third one is different. Twenty-fourth one is different. Twenty-fifth one is different. Twenty-sixth one is different. Twenty-seventh one is different. Twenty-eighth one is different. Twenty-ninth one is different. Twenty-tenth one is different. Twenty-eleventh one is different. Twenty-twelfth one is different. Twenty-thirteenth one is different. Twenty-fourteenth one is different. Twenty-fifteenth one is different. Twenty-sixteenth one is different. Twenty-seventh one is different. Twenty-eighth one is different. Twenty-ninth one is different. Nowadays, so, most of the injections. So, 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 so,
when it is present uh, susceptible for degradation when it is present in a liquid state especially because because it is a this is a biologic generally they are made up of uh, we can call them as a large uh, large molecules and whereas pharmaceutical products we generally call as a small molecules small molecules generally will have a better stability because they are made up of uh, synthetic products whereas in the case of a large molecules which i mean to say they are peptides and proteins these are generally highly coiled structures uh, yeah. which is uh, have proteinaceous structures which may be susceptible for degradation with the presence of a liquid state because this liquids containing different types of chemical moieties which are being dissolved so the product may even get degraded and here my concern is whenever you make whenever you make a product why you make first so you you, you make a product in a liquid state that is a first choice when you make a product in a liquid state if the product is having a good solubility and also it should be stable in a liquid form that is the first problem first question okay and it should show good immunological response in a liquid state this is a second third third one you can say so this three criteria it should fulfill then only we can choose it to go into a liquid state why you are going for lyophilized state generally a lyophilization is a very big prospect to having a very big scope uh, this lyophilization is generally done and it will be preferred only if the product is not stable or if there is any ph drift is there uh, if due to the presence of a liquid state for more period of time so we try to prepare them in a life laser state and if it is not stable that is the second criteria and it is not showing any immunological response a lot of loss of potency and all of these things then only you prefer to prepare them in a life laser state for life laser how many people uh, are aware about a life laser here what the presence of How many of the students are uh, faculty? And what is your experience with the lyophilization? Anyone has done any product with the lyophilization? Tried at least once? Did it? Can you say that? What are you? Did you try it? Don't you? Ah, sir. Yes, freezing of product. So have you done? Have you done? Anyone? Have you tried? No. You have not done. No. Okay. You should uh, request your management to purchase one life laser, small scale, pirate scale. If it is available, you can try to do life laser because the life laser is having a very big scope in the market. Uh, means it in the prospect of job designing of life laser cycle, having a big scope. Uh, you know, triple uh, here triple point. You know, people maybe students or lecturers uh, may be knowing about a triple point. triple point plays very very important role as well as the free star might be there and uh, if you have a practical exposure then generally we can look at have better understanding so why we are discussing today about the drug device combination products today so generally we have injectables injectable packet to reach by 81.46 billion by 2030 so nowadays uh, the capsules tablets and solid oral doses from market is coming down even uh, we can see in r and d the scope of uh, this particular material is like uh, doses from tablets capsules has been almost extinct now people are targeting only for injectables that to large molecules large molecules like blood factors cytokines peptidal hormones immunoglobulins monoclonal antibody insulins and other types of classes drugs Which are of large molecules. So this is actually for the latest data which is published. So the injectables we have a day. These are the different uh, injectables. Generally we have. We don't have much which we see in every day to day life. So ampules are all, all almost extinct. So we will not see ampules. Uh, maybe after uh, 10-15 years, ampules uh, will be like a almost zero. So vials as a uh, liquid products. Uh, we have and freeze dead products why ampules are going to extinct in the market can anyone tell me reshma stability problem sir 
one more issue particle size growth in case of breaking of particles yes actually what happens uh, transport is a big issue and uh, you know extractable reachable cl and l they are used to tell extractable and reachables glass generally we tell glass is a even it is a borosilicate glass we have a different types of the silicate also so this glass what it does what it do is when you keep the product for more period of time in contact in a ampule okay in the glass it even break some particles even come out from the that glass also this was almost reported and this is going to create the glass is going to leach out as well as a particle okay and it come into product also so that's the biggest problem and carrying this ampule is a another big and how to open this ampule so you know that glass cutter but most of the people don't have that glass cutter and there is a chances that these particles may even fall inside the ampule also and that may be getting injected into the body also so the ampules are almost extinct now in the market so actually these are the major two classes which are occupying 80 to 90 percent of the injectable market nowadays in total india if you see or in global in a in a us if you go you will not see ampule very very less but this ampules uh, nowadays is getting it is being used only for the reconstruction they are being in supplied in the plastic pp so do you think this uh, fulfillment requirements is there is a drawback is there any presence is there tell me you have to tell so whether this i 80 to 90 percentage of injectables market is already completed so whether this is enough or you need any advancement uh, advancement in injectables so this advancement creates a separate device system for injectables so that is <coughs> ddcs drug device combination products so drug device combination product is a different prospect to uh, even we can see this type of things were only for some specific products in large molecules as well as uh, small molecules also so if you see here <coughs> these are the different parts this is a ddc which containing a liquid component in the center which is a drug and there is a diluent present here you can see diluent present here and a plunger is there so whenever you apply pressure on plunger <coughs> so the pressure whatever you are applying should be enough to pull this cell liquid diluent to bypass this middle stopper and mix this drug substance and it is going to once again if you complete if you start keep on applying the pressure it will come out okay <coughs> so this is a uh, you can see so this is how the ddc is look actually so these are this is one type uh, where you have a ddc which is having a two uh, membrane separated so so what is the uh, major problem in this prospect so if you see there are different components are there uh, the drug is getting interacted with rubber star, rubber okay and it is going to interact with direct glass and this drug product is all even going to interact with the needle also so this drug is going to have interaction with different types of products generally if you take a vial or ampule the drug product is going to interact only with with a uh, glass or upper stopper or syringe so but here the chances of interaction is going to increase that is a concern here okay <coughs> this is the economical prospectus of ddc see whenever we need some sophistication sophistication needs money so the economical prospects of ddcs so ddcs cost generally will be high then compared to your regular ampule vial 
but this economical prospectus trends shows these DDCs will market will grow up because our market totally depends we are mostly interdependent on US market so the global DDCs market size expected to project from 131 million in 2020 and it will go up to 182 million by 2025 <coughs> So the, this is a compound annual growth turnover rate of increase of 6.8 percentage. This is a huge increase. So this happened uh, basically with this COVID, where with this COVID intervention, this increase in the growth rate has been increased. Okay. In 2021, the global device combination market was valued as 93,524 million. It's a very big market. The size of market is expected to increase from one fifty. Uh, there's one lakh fifty one thousand one hundred sixty one USD in two thousand by two thousand twenty one. This is a compound annual growth rate of seven point one percentage. So the growth rate of this product is going to shows this drug device combination product is having a market in everywhere. So, what is the main advantage of DDCs over traditional market? The traditional market is different. So, the traditional market, what we have seen, that is ampule, vial, these type of systems we have seen. So, there uh, we have a what? What is the main disadvantage of a vial and ampule? Can anyone tell me? Hello. Are you hello? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. It is audible, sir. Okay. It's what is the main? Okay. My what is the main disadvantage of a vial and ampule? <clears throat> any of the student or even any lecturers? Disadvantage of a vial or ampule? Hello. So the main disadvantage of a vial or ampule is accuracy of dosage form. Are you there? Hello. Sir, yes, sir. It is audible. <coughs> Just want to know whether you are listening or not. So, so the main disadvantage of a vial or ampule is doses, dose, how much dose you are giving. So do do you? I think some of you might have studied the COVID time. What happened? So the COVID vaccine you have taken that is in the form of a what form you have taken? That is a whether it is a vial or ampule. Next class also can interact. COVID you have taken vaccine as a vial or ampule? Vial. Ah, uh, vial only, no. So vial. Whether the dose, even there are some mistakes happen during the giving the doses. Actually, the dose is 0.5 ml, which was supplied in a 10 ml vial. So 10 ml vial, some of the nurse, some of the outpatient, uh, some of the staff, medical staff, they have even sometimes they have given at a time 5 ml also without having proper concern. Because the dose here is very very important. The dose can be misadministered and it can be given more without even if you train them also. By sometimes there is very very big chances of giving high doses. So the accurate dosing is a one of the important prospectus with the DDCs because DDCs the dose volume is a fixed one and that will be given uh, accurately. It's a main advantage. And easily handling, there is no need to take a uh, your uh, reconstruction liquid once again reconstructing, and uh, that problem will not be there. So that uh, easiness, <coughs> easy of handling will be there. And seal integrity is one of the important criteria. Seal integrity means what is a seal for ampule for vial? You have a seal available. So that will be checked with the high detection, high device uh, leak test rate will be there. So which is used to to test the seal integrity whether there is any leakage is there or not. 
so that the integrity issues also will not be there because the product as well as the reconstitution liquid both are present in the same injection and a high stability is expected because the product is very very integral so high stability is expected and a wild wastage can be minimized so the glass wheel wastage can be minimized because if you want to give two instead of using the two wires or two forms taking a liquid as well as a life laser once again they can shooting you can able to avoid that wild wastage so this will be main advantage adverse event as i told adverse event also can be neglected due to human negligence human negligence is very very high so that can be avoided here <coughs> major issue and increasing in cold chain space in developing countries like india is a main issue in india the you know during the uh, covid situation because even we want to transport the vaccine the cold chain has become a biggest question for the import of the vaccine from us you know because uh, they require a minus 20 or minus 70 degrees uh, for the vaccine but india it does not have the cold chain so there uh, there after we have made our own vaccine uh, later it was transported even then also we don't have a cold chain presence everywhere throughout india Uh, still, that is becoming a very big issue. Um, so, for that reason, uh, generally we prefer to prepare a product which is stable at room temperature. That is, even though it is a life laser form, generally most of the uh, vaccines as well as um, pharmaceutical products generally they are not preferred to store at room temperature. Only few products. So. so, generally, if you see, <coughs> so don't get confused with the pre-filled syringes with the DDCs. Uh, we have a ddc stuck device combination products we have a uh, two types once again that uh, dcs the dcs is dual chamber syringes and dual chamber cartridges also available in the market <coughs> so dual chamber syringes are those which are containing a syringe with a needle so and the second one dual chamber cartridge is with the septum septum will be there uh, where you can able to keep uh, once again the needle you have to attach so this is a dual chamber cartridge so cartridges are generally like our uh, pen and rifle okay so you can add a cartridge into that and you can use it okay so this is only with septum you already have a, uh, a ready made injectable uh, where you can able to fill this cartridge and you can start using that one whereas a dual chamber syringes are those which are containing with the needle so these are the two types and pre filled syringes are different pre filled syringes are generally a uh, simple one where you have a liquid or a liquid will be liquid will be there and we have a plunger will be there just uh, you just need to inject into the bottle that's pre filled syringes so ddds uh, ddds is generally has got more eyesight due to the models like uh, live test this live test is one of the important uh, uh, which has given uh, more eyesight uh, because people have been seeing uh, about the ddcs after the invention of this uh, live test this live test is uh, invented by lobo uh, lipo uh, lipo med yo sorry yo so med so this people uh, has this one so this epso med if you see uh, this is a of two types so we have a two variables are present in this one once again live paste we have a mono dose as well as multi dose also available so the mono dose generally it is having a single dose whereas multi dose you will have a cartridge and you can able to set here the dose value how much you want to fix so we will have a graduation available based on the graduation you can able to inject into the body so here if you see the different steps so how to use this one the first one is uh, fixing the dose first one then inject whereas in the case of uh, variable dose if you want to use a different of doses like you uh, one day you want to take a 0.8 mg 0.8 ml or the second day you want to take 1 ml like that so you need to adjust the dose every time so then you have you can able to take 
this if so many people they will not prepare any uh, drugs or doses forms they only sell this particular products they will design the device so if you tell your uh, uh, your uh, whatever the requirements so these people are going to design the device so device drug device combination product is the design drug device they will prepare and you have to uh, prepare your doses that is a uh, injectable solution and you have to test your integrity with this particular product like uh, stability and also you have to test about uh, ccat container closure integrity test you have to do and you have to do a perform the leak test you have to check for the stability you have to check uh, the filling capacity and uh, there are different prospectus will be there all these things need to be addressed by the person who are going to devise so this live test is also customization also available so as i told these people are going to sell only the device only. so the live test prio is there live test prio video is there live test prio s is there live test prio video s also is there. so live test prio is a manual injection mode with a single fixed dose and live test prio video is a manual injection mode you can able to test you can able to set up to six dose settings and the third one is the live test prio s is a automatic injection with a single fixed dose and live test video is automatic injection with a single variable dose with eight dose range so the scientist who is working and the company uh, depends upon their uh, cost feasibility and the product uh, requirement is very very important here it is not that, that uh, the product the doses or device system is very very advanced so that we can use it for every process form so it has so it, it, it should be economically feasible and also it should be it should be always uh, should be uh economically feasibility is one of the important criteria and it should be reachable to the common public also so this type of uh, most advanced devices are mostly accepted in us because there the cost of uh, this one is very different in india the vaccine is a uh, to replace in covid so that is the cheapest uh, vaccine available in india so if you see the live twist trio here you have a minimum dose of 0.1 ml the maximum dose is 1 ml so here you can see there are different uh, forms so this is the live test trio the second you can see uh, there are, this is a rubber rubber here you can see uh, different components are available so length and breadth also you can see here so this compatible needle the major com complex station here is needle selection to the different devices different uh, components which are going to interact with the drug product is very very important here how what is the material do you think uh, needles are made up of anyone anyone can able to tell me this type of most advanced devices are mostly hello am i audible hello yes sir yes sir so what is the material and what uh, it was made up of like uh, Uh, needles are made up of which material? Needles are made up of tungsten generally, but the tungsten is also having an issues. Tungsten, uh, even when interacts with the, some of the drug components, it also can give some of the extractables. Okay, so uh, what are extractable and leachable? Extractable and EL and S generally they are called as extractable. Extractable and leachable is generally given uh, the very very important uh, uh, important criteria uh, with respect to the designing or preparation of process forms. Extractable are those which are coming out of the uh, material where the drug is going to interact. For example, here <coughs> if you see your product, your product here is going to interact with some glass here, for example, or polycarbonate. If the polycarbonate is not uh, having a good uh, extending capacity or uh, it is not having a stability, so it also can able to give some of the material from it. So that is extraction can happen. Whereas leachability can generally happen when when with during interaction with the drug substance product. So some of sometimes what happens? Some of the material from the product can leach out of the product. 
so extraction and reachability both important factors can should be tested so <clears throat> in the final product so here every product whenever your product uh, dp product that is a drug product whenever it interacts with uh, uh, more and more complicated systems like uh, glass tungsten filament uh, the tungsten needle uh, and also polycarbonate or rubber uh, plunger plunger is there no plunger is made up of rubber so whenever it started interacting so what will happen there is some extraction and reachability issues which is going to come up so we'll try to always try to decrease this type of interaction or try to establish a guidelines and set us set a specification so that your product does not have any impact on the uh, final output so that is a important criteria for any uh, person or a scientist who are working on this one so we have to write spe set a specifications for each and every way component which is going to come in contact with your drug product so that specification should be fulfilled by the person who is supplying the device that is a criteria <clears throat> so this is a, this should be tested okay so this is another form if you see this is a this whatever you so made uh, we have seen this is a totally liquid form so the whereas i am giving one more example uh, these are the mixed gel system this is a trellister trellister is a product uh, which is a for a, whereas it is available for uh, already available in the market this is very costly product also this is supplied by west <coughs> west pharma so these people also supplying this one uh, supplying the devices so here this is a live product this is totally made up of live product this trellister is for a live product here you can see different uh, uh, steps involved how to fix this device also first you, this product we have to fix the step one is you have to fix <coughs> the cap you have a while is available you have to fix that one and the glass rod in 2a and 2b you can see and later you had to close close the knob here by reversing this one and you have to apply pressure so that the diluent will go directly into the wire okay so next <coughs> you have to unscrew this one and you can do the mixing if you want later once again remove this uh flip from the engine needle <coughs> later when able to inject this one you can take into one same same wire you can see here 5a 5 5b you can see here you can able to take the liquid once again back into the same injection and remove the needle cover and seven you can see the removal of this one <coughs> so this is a about the trellister trellister it is a product uh, which is available in the market is a very costly product also uh, this is a product is a generally is also innovation uh, these people also will supply uh, the device only so once if a product is suitable and if you can identify this product your product is suitable for this particular device then you can able to approach west and they can able to product provide you this particular uh, trellister also mixed jet, mixed jet system this is called as a mixed jet system so this mixed jet system is very much useful uh, only the as we have, as we have discussed to avoid uh, the reconstitution issues reconstitution issues as well as dosage issues also okay so generally in a, in a pharmaceutical uh, doses from preparation whenever the dose is uh, is of zero for example if, they, if any dose is 0.5 ml it is not filled for 0.5 ml it is will be filled with the over edges so that is depends upon the extractable volume we call it as an extractable volumes so how much we can able to extract from the why is an important factor here so based upon that we will fix the how much amount of the product should be uh, active constituent should be present and how much volume it should be reconstituted and how much volume it should be taken up apart from this there are different other factors which need to be tested for the this particular type of drug delivery drug device combination products okay
so tractable combination products as you have seen till now uh, there are a lot of interaction with a lot of materials if you see here the drug is going to interact with glass here later when it comes when you are going to take up into the plunger back it is going to interact here with some pt material later here with rubber plunger later with some polycarbonate or glass so what does the uh, generally uh, this uh, uh, injectable uh, systems generally we call it as a syringes syringes are made up of what material generally <coughs> anyone anyone can tell me what is the material used for a syringe makeup how it is made up of am i audible to you hello yes sir audible the major challenges of drug based formulation product is manufacturing issues is one of the main factor because you are seeing that there are lot of uh, uh, there are different number of prospectus are there and there are different uh, uh, injective uh, there are different products are which are coming into the issues so the manufacturing is one of the issue here and pro <coughs> product compatibility because the product has to interact with uh, different types of uh, materials here so product compatibility is one of the factor and insurance of the device functionality <coughs> what is the insurance of device functionality <coughs> what is the insurance of device functionality <coughs> device functionality means you, you see your mixed jet system <coughs> your mixed jet system or your, your uh, lipo med system your so med system whatever it may be so it may even get failure right so that insurance is very very important it, it is not meant that you are going to make the insurance it is just telling that how far it will work so if you prepare 100 devices out of 100 devices how many are going to get success okay so that is insurance of device functionality and moisture migration <coughs> to device chamber and dry powder so this is one of the important prospectus we should discuss so because see one side of the device you have a liquid component and it is separated by a barrier the other side you have a solid component so both should be separated by a membrane here so there is a chances that from <coughs> liquid can even migrate to the other side even if it won't migrate due to the increase in temperature if there is any uh, temperature fluctuations is there so there may be choice chances of moisture generation that can even liquefy a powder also so that should be tested here and also compatibility issues with respect to the place where it getting stored and where it is going to get traveled is also need to be tested here so extractable and detachables are the very very important factor extraction as i told the product uh, from the product something is going to get extracted and leaching out from the device something is going to get extracted leaching leaching out so extraction and leachables very very important factor for a, especially for these types of devices even as of my uh, as of my uh, experience is concerned we have even seen even if the product is not that much complicated also even if you are filling in a vial also there is a chances of extraction and leachability issues are there extraction and leachables are even studied with respect to the uh, uh, filters filters and tubings also filters and tubings are very very important <coughs> in the formulation point of view as well as a, a development point of view filters containing of different types like a poly uh, PES and PVDF uh, different types of filters are available hydrophobic or hydrophilic types of filters so which are made up of cellulosic and uh, elastomeric type of filters also available so your product may even sometimes even interact with this particular type of filter even get uh, extract or leach can happen <coughs> so those also need to be studied and the finally important thing is container closure integrity systems and role of ELND is very very important here 
so the container closed integrity means what is the cca cca so container closed integrity some of the b farm students might have studied so we used to perform some of the tests whether product is content closed integrity is there or not for example you can do hpl say also you can study whether product when it comes in contact with the some of the material sometimes it may loses its particular type of uh, activity uh, because the product containing your uh, container containing a different types of uh, material composition material makeup so it may even lose the integrity also and the role of el and is uh, extractable vegetables are very very important in this particular type of products especially in drug device combination products <coughs> is concerned so apart from this uh, this ddc is generally it is made up of <coughs> made up of uh, high intent package so we are generally used to prepare uh, them in a very closed environment we generally uh, you know if you see the injectables generally they used to perform lot of tests and a lot of aseptic requirements are there so like that uh, like what are the different types so like you have a a class b class c class d class it has to be there depends upon the pressure they built positive pressure or negative pressure and what type of microorganisms we we handle if you if you go for a vaccines <coughs> so b class area a class area and uh, c class area that depends upon number of particles presence and acceptable number or number of particles presence and it it, it even restrict the presence of a number of particles also generally a class area or b class area is most preferred for the manufacturing of uh, uh, vaccines we prefer we generally used to prepare uh, more blending activity generally we used to do in uh, blending and filling activity it happens generally in a b class area and generally we call the lafu <coughs> where we used to perform the most of the activities as a, a class area generally what happened this type of uh, thing it happened really also so that is why the qc important and particulate examination is very very important uh, in the injectable systems so the, it is a very very critical role the presence of white particles black particles apart from this the presence of glass particles also used to come you also make a habit whenever you take the injections or whatever it may be to try to observe what is present inside why injectables are made as a transparent glass you know because we can even see what is present inside so by because we don't believe you see what it may happen because uh, uh, there is a uh, there is a different cases are uh, there even in uh, hyderabad the dilo for hospital some people has been given with a uh, contaminated uh, large volume parenteral which is having fungus and that has lead to the death of some two to three people has been, uh, This, like these things can happen so it is made up of a transparent so sometimes even happen the glass needle tungsten filaments tungsten particles also can even come into your drug product also so because that is why it is made up of a transparent uh, that you your uh, uh, injection uh, what is made uh, and also you <coughs> whatever you say your uh, vial ampule is made up of transparent so that whenever you reconstruct you can see what is present inside it may even uh, dissolve or undissolve it may have black particle white particle who knows it may even have a glass pass particles also right so actually the presence of this particular glass particles was observed uh, and there is a lot of call back call back happened uh in uh, in last uh, 10 years so this call back option is a very very big option big uh, market withdrawal we can tell even tell as a market withdrawal is a very very big blow back to the companies so that why the uses of glass instead plastic is more preferred so nowadays they have been developing cyclic oleophilic polymers and cyclic one of oleophilic copolymers and uh, being used the usage of siliconizer or non siliconizer is a big question mark depends upon the product you know what is a siliconization anyone you know anything <clears throat> actually this is siliconization generally 
reduces the friction of barrel barrel so whenever you plunge it inside so the barrel if it is smooth the barrel will go inside <coughs> and also the vial vial what happens is vial if it is siliconized the sometimes the drug may even stick into the vial surface that is called as that is called as what is that is called as anyone it is called as adsorption adsorption process so this process of uh, one physical interaction process where your drug product drug product even sometimes interact with the and it is getting attached to the surface of the glass vial so this is also should be avoided <coughs> this generally happens as a physical van der waals force of attraction so this can be avoided by using a siliconized vials this is siliconization <coughs> is depends upon the silicon oil how much percentage of silicon oil you are using to coat the vials uh, nowadays the siliconized vials also available directly you are getting the siliconized vials also available in the market there are some other cases where the usage of siliconized oil can even leads to the back movement that is uh, agglomeration Rains of this silicon oil can even lead to the agglomeration, clouding effect also can be seen. So plunger generally made up of rubber. So rubber you have a puck type system. So where the single cavity will be there, whereas the second one is a magazine system where you have a multiple cavities also available. So the magazine system generally useful for the multi doses for and puck uh, puck type systems where the single cavity systems generally used for a single doses form so the nozzle glass is nozzle is made up of a glass or plastic so the nozzle is made up of a glass or plastic so this nozzle is also very important so because the drug has to move through the barrel and it is going to race to the nozzle so it is going to interact at the nozzle position also so they scored so we have to definitely test for the plastic interaction also so these are the iso standards so these are the iso standards for the your ddcs generally so uh, the quality standards for uh, pfs if you see so this uh, should be fulfilled and same to be followed for the ddcs so here if you see <coughs> they have given very clear uh, guidelines for the biological evaluation for the medical devices like evaluation and testing how to test this particular medical devices so and also sterilization method and uh, because these are uh, generally you can have some of the products you can have to do a sterilization by autoclaving so do you know why autoclaving what is the temperature hello are you there hello yes sir hello yes sir What is the temperature? Yes, sir. Twenty degrees, sir. One twenty-one degrees. For how many minutes? Ten to fifteen minutes. Ten to fifteen minutes. So that is a hold up time. Actually, the hold up time it will go for ten to fifteen minutes. That is okay. Uh, sometimes actually, actually in outer play we have a different prospect to serve there. Uh, depends upon the product to product. We have to validate the uh, validate the cycle. Outer play cycle also will be there. There is a. increasing of uh, temperature to 121 degrees and how much time you are going to keep this 121 degrees is a critical factor from there once again the temperature will come down okay so this particular temperature once again how what is the material you are going to load into your autoclave and how and how what is the load pattern and what is the load pattern you are going to keep whether you are going to keep in the center or whether you are keeping in the side whether you are keeping the top whether you are overloading the material <coughs> so that should be tested and also here we cannot use the autoclave here why because tell me because at 121 degrees what happen here you have a multiple products are there even for pfs pre filled syringes also you have a plunger you have you have a glass and you have a uh, rubber so 121 degrees the rubber even get a melt so you cannot go for auto claving <coughs> so it is definitely you have to go by moist heat sterilization 
and you cannot go at 121 degrees and you have to test your product whether it is stable at 121 degrees or not everything is a different type of things you may even you may need to use even ethylene oxide also as a inline sterilization methods also next uh, so here here also you can see sterilization for heat rate heat care products also see some of the products may be heat care products so like if you go for if you, if you think that your product is not stable then you have to how to sterilize that product because you are working on injectables injectables should be sterilized so how to sterilize if your product or your device is not prone for if it is prone for heat degradation so how to do that part so these things should be established properly and biological evaluation of medical devices for evaluation how you have how to evaluate your product when it is going to come in contact with the medical devices so all these are the guidelines and the pen injectors for medical devices iso you can see here so the first one whatever i have given that is a pen injector so some of the people may be using the cartridge form of the pen injector as is in insulin is one of the best example <coughs> so most of the people they may be using already this type of <coughs> this one and the needle free injections are also available in the market and how to test the requirements of the these things should be tested should be studied <coughs> and you should establish the specifications for each product uh, because every product is unique and every product should be tested in a different manner so that should, that should be fulfilled so here you can see ISO 11040-4 which explains about the pre-filled syringes part 4 glass barrels so when the glass barrel comes in contact how to handle that one everything is written there so you can refer and whereas you can see the plungers and stoppers and uh, that is important because the plungers and stoppers are coming in contact with directly with the a drug product so that should also be in going through <coughs> testing accessibility of durability of devices of drug apart from this uh, <coughs> the combination product development steps continues the complex process so the combination product whenever a product comes in contact with the different types of uh, materials it should be complex so we should focus mainly on drug design <coughs> how to design uh, drug design process is often try to uh, referring specifics because whether we should use uh, silicon oil or uh, amount or how much percentage of silicon oil we should use and how to design and uh, what are the different adjuvants we use all these things are very very important during the designing of the product after designing you have to design your product design your product to the standards so later you can even work out how to uh, make and what type of devices whether you replace or detect the device combination product or as some special device is needed or not that is a different prospect <coughs> so after designing is completed so the design output should be tested as per the input criteria so <clears throat> once you prepare a formulation so that formulation should be have some specifications right for example you prepare a daptomycin so daptomycin injection should be tested so dapt daptomycin injection should be tested daptomycin injection should be tested for different types of assay and other different Devices should be tested. This uh, drug should be tested for required specification. Whether it is fulfilling the amount, uh, that should be tested first. So, like I say, uh, RS also will be there. Whereas in the case of pharmaceutical products, RS is nothing but relative substances because uh, pharmaceutical products are generally tend it's to uh, degrade <coughs> the, the main assay. Active component is going to degrade, and you will have a Relative substances will come out. So, relative substances and residual solvent. There are two types of things you can see in pharmaceutical substances. <coughs> One is relative substances. Relative substances generally comes from a assay. 
so this sound is coming for me hello hello and the related substances generally <coughs> we can uh, Yeah. Hello. I'm getting this sound. Can you please uh, turn up your mic? Uh, yes, sir. <clears throat> so, uh, if you see the uh, this uh, residual solvent as well as related substances. So, actually, why I was telling all these things is because we should have some awareness about how a normal product will be, will be tested. Uh, then only we can able to design. our actual product which is going for the <coughs> drug device combination products so this drug device combination is only like benin and mozambique uh, these are three developing uh, countries they have the but then another uh, researcher is from india so these are three different uh, cold supply chains and the single dose mr dual chamber injections who uh, would need to the large uh, around the 5.2 cubic uh, Centimeters not significantly impair the flow of other viruses without impairing the cold chain capacity. So the single dose MR dual chamber injection devices reduce the open well wastage to any other volume that can lead to the increase in the MR vaccine availability. So and however, uh, there is an increase in the volume of volume per dose is compared to the current 10 dose MR viral vaccines and moderately. Consider considered uh, constraints supply chains would be unable to handle the excess volume, resulting the fewer doses per queue and administer. So that is what they mean to tell is uh, they we are able to reduce the uh, wastes and we are able to reduce the, uh, the disturbances which is being created during the supply of vaccine. So we are able to give a dual chamber device instead of a Wide system, traditional system, so that it can able to uh, supply this one to the lot of people uh, without any deviations. So this is uh, reported and published, uh, supported by Bill Melinda Gates Foundation. They used to supply for the development of uh, vaccines, even for, uh, for COVID also. They have been uh, been given some money. and uh, being supplying the lot of research activities in uh, india also uh, because india is a leading producer of vaccines throughout the world so they they be this people are being supporting people because they want to uh, supply the vaccines to the world especially in north african countries so the marketed formulations of ddc so these are the marketed formulations generally available This includes both uh, pharmaceutical as well as biological products and growth hormones and uh, other things are available in this list. So here you can see uh, this uh, aripiprazole and uh, extended and uh, alpro stadin and, uh, and recombinant human growth hormones also available. Uh, Lupro E S T is the And also, there are different products are available. The main manufacturers, if you see, AstraZeneca, Pfizer, Lilly, Abbott, is, and uh, most of them are uh, like uh, GSK, Pfizer, Sanofi, Pasteur. They have this uh, sal salmonella type purified capsular protein. Uh, so, for typhoid vaccines, so these people they have this uh, Sanofi, Pasteur, they have this vaccine. In the form of a drug device combination product in 2003 itself. So this is not a new one; it is a old one actually. The but the people uh, acceptance is very very important factor here, uh, and the, that is why the limitations of spreading is very very difficult. And also the companies, uh, it is not easy to change the lines because while uh, in now only in, in Indian uh, companies they have been coming up uh, with. Uh, briefly said this so slowly they are coming closing the wild system also slowly in future you can see the briefly said this only available in the market so wilds are also the like ampule position in future definitely so this is about the market formulations and dds so these are the references you can see here the injectable uh, drug market size share i have taken and where i have taken all these materials 
thing is uh, telestonicals if you want to interested more about this uh, lime twist which i have presented in the first uh, slides so you can study from lime twist brochure you can download it here and trellister.com is a website which is specifically available and uh, veteran pharma these people also actually supplying the barrels actually the products uh, if you see uh, you don't require to manufacture uh, you don't require to manufacture all these uh, device all these devices like uh, vials and ampules which are being supplied by west pharma and other people is a uh, is also available as a parts they like this they will supply the barrels one people the different suppliers are available you will get the barrel being supplied by someone and uh, stoppers will be plungers everything will be supplied by all uh, west pharma scott there are different suppliers are available they used to supply the uh, material and uh, even they we need then even if you give the product to which you want to use uh, they will do the extractable leachability study also and they will give the certification telling that your product is uh, having so and so extraction uh, extractable things are available and leachability is uh, this is the thing and they will give you the quantities also so you can able to establish the limits based upon the testing data so this is the thing uh, we have been discussing today about the drug device combination product uh, drug device combination products as well as life preservation basic concepts of life preservation and also we have discussed about the global trends of drug device combination products and the other different types of drug device combination products like uh, with the needle without needle and uh, and also different models which are available in the market also that's all uh, any questions from you people Sir, thank you very much, sir, for your uh, valuable presentation. And we request the participants for the interaction with uh, the resource person. If any participants have any question, kindly interact with the resource person. Ramshankar, sir. With Ramshankar. Hello. Yes, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Your present, your presentation is very nice, sir. So one, one doubt, sir. In growth hormone is there, injection is there, no? In three types of, three types of the dosage is there, but our storage is how same storage is this, sir? Different storage, two point eighty like that, like that is. How sir? Well, storage is depends upon the product suitability. Whether it is yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. It does not affect actually depends upon the doses. Doses is oh. different and product attributes are different. Product attributes oh. only depends upon the whether product is stable at that particular. टेचरिंग्रेसिंग्रेसिंग्रेसिंग्रेसिंग्रेसिंग्रेसिंग्रेसिंग्रेसिंग्रेसिंग्रेसिंग्रेसिंग्रेसिंग्रेसिंग्र
sir, thank you very much, sir, again. Uh, now we take yeah. it to place, sir, to invite our next uh, lecture, sir. Next yeah. lecture, sir. Okay. One minute. <coughs> I just wanted to say, say thank you to the uh, Shantiram College of Pharmacy and uh, uh, Dr. Sh Dr. Suresh Kumar sir and uh, Tassikari sir <coughs> for giving me and uh, the principal of the college uh, Matsudan Chetty Garu uh, for giving me the opportunity as a uh, speaker uh, for this uh, impact program. I am thankful to everyone uh, for giving me the opportunity. I uh, hope I have given my total knowledge and uh, any time uh, any help if the students need any type of uh, queries you can contact me and uh, we can interact. Uh, okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Sir, thank you. Thank you, Roshan. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, now we take it as a privilege uh, to invite our next chair, session chair by Dr. Yoga Janelo Kasseti, who is a senior research associate. Uh, Pharma and the Chemistry, Patents, KS Partners, Bangalore. So now I request uh, Dr. Pradeep uh, to give a brief uh, biodata about uh, Dr. Yogananda. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, very good morning, sir. Yogananda, sir. Hi, sir. Very good morning. Sir, you sir? are very fine, sir. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. I'm good. Thank you for accepting our uh, invitation. It's my pleasure, sir. So, Dr. Pradeep, sir. I can share the slides. Good to everyone. A pleasure to read the profile of Dr. Yoganjayalu Kasseti, sir. Dr. Yoganjayalu Kasseti, sir, is a patent attorney in the pharma chemistry practice area of the team. He assists in the drafting and prosecution of patents in the areas of pharmaceuticals, medical diagnostics, therapeutics, nanotechnology, chemistry, bioinformatics and biotechnology. He works particularly in NCEs, anti-diabetics, anti-cancer, antiviral, pyrocytocidal, anti-malarial, antibacterial therapeutics area, drug delivery technology including dendrimer and nanoparticles, fertilizers, steel and cooking technology and cosmetics. He regularly assists in various multinational and domestic clients in the, in the state areas. He also handles opinions on the validity and enforcement of patents, freedom to operate, patent and landscape searches and infringement analysis. He is well versed with handling chemical such databases such as STN, Wayfinder and Reaxis Extra. He regularly appears before the Indian Patent Office in connection with prosecution and enforcement of patent rights. He has several international and national publications to his credit. He is also a regular speaker at various conferences and seminars. Prior to joining the film, he worked for three years with a leading knowledge process outsourcing company in India and as academician at various pharmacy institutions. And Saur also got various achievements and honors like university rank holder in graduation Karthi University, state rank holder in diploma Karnataka, recipient, uh, recipient of CSIR fellowship and Laxo Smith Klein graduate student and post doctoral travel award winner. So with this I request uh, Yogan sir to proceed the session. Over to Yogan sir. First of all, thank you, sir. Thanks a lot for your kind introduction. And <clears throat> also, I am very thankful to the organizing committee, Dr. Shivshikar Reddigaru and Dr. Sheikh Nilegaru. Also, I am thankful to organizing secretary, uh, Dastagiri Reddigaru, Dr. Dastagiri Reddigaru. And the convener also, Dr. C. Malsudha Chetigaru. Thanks a lot for giving me this opportunity. Uh, so, I would like to <coughs> uh, share the knowledge, uh, whatever that I have gained over the years in the field of uh, patents uh, in the form of this presentation. I'm just sharing my slides. So you are able to see my uh, slides, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Uh, 
So to begin with, in this uh, presentation, I would like to uh, briefly uh, uh, speak on uh, introduction to patent drafting and prosecution related aspects. Earlier, I gave uh, presentations uh, where I talked about much about basics of uh, patents. So nonetheless, I'll uh, uh, talk about little bit about the basics of patents and then uh, we'll get into the drafting as well as prosecution related aspects. So to begin with, uh, I would like to uh, uh, give a brief introduction about my firm. Uh, I work for a company called Candice Partners. So it's an intellectual property law firm established in 1994. We have offices across the <coughs> different cities in uh, India, Bangalore, Gurga, Mumbai, Hyderabad and Chennai. So 70% uh, of our uh, overall IP practice is on patents and designs and 30% is a good mix of trademarks, copyrights and geographical indications. We are ranked as a tier 1 IP firm in the industry and our vision is to be the finest IP firm in India. So now quickly uh, beginning the introduction about the patents. Uh, so patent is an award for the inventor and a reward for the investor. So if any person identifies something, I mean uh, invents something, then he should be rewarded uh, for the kind of efforts or energy that he has put in to bring out that kind of you know invention which will be helpful for the betterment of the society right so that is where the each country uh, has their own patenting system and patenting office patent offices who will grant the monopoly for the inventor or the investor for a uh, for a period of 20 years uh, they will give that monopoly and it will be usually uh, granted by the patent office for example in case of uh, india it is indian patent office and in case of US, it is US Patent Office and in case of Europe, it is European Patent Office. Likewise, every country has more these patent offices. So they will grant the uh, patent if it qualifies, you know, as an invention. So we'll see like what are the qualify qualifiable aspects for, you know, for an invention to be granted as a patent. And this patent protection is territorial, territorial uh, in nature which means that if you would like to uh, uh, get a patent in India, you have to apply to the Indian Patent Office. If you wanted to get a patent in US, then you have to apply for US Patent Office. There is nothing called international patent. There is something called, but there is something called international application. So international applications uh, means these are also called as patent cooperation treaty applications. Shortly, shortly it is also called as PCT applications. So these PCT applications will never be granted. These PCT applications are al always uh, application in stage. After 30 or 31 months, they will get lapsed. So this 30-31 uh, months of time will be helpful for uh, the inventor or investor to file application across the globe. So that is the idea behind the having uh, the international application. But uh, please remember that there is nothing called international patent as such. Okay, so what kind of uh, advantages uh, patentee? Patentee means the person who got the patent will get uh, when he gets a patent. So what kind of advantages he will be getting? So he is the exclusive person right to sell, market, manufacture or distribute the product whatever that he has developed through his invention. So, but uh, here the catch is that he has to make the, uh, he has to make the invention uh, uh, in public. Suppose if he identifies something, he has to publish it in the form of a patent document. Th that happens. I mean, uh, le let's say in India, Indian Patent Office uh, publishes periodically journals wherein they publish all the inventions. Okay, even we have a patent office website also. I'll show you how to access the, uh, that patent office website and how to do search so that you will get a fair idea about the Indian patent office and uh, how to search uh, document, patent related documents in the Indian patent office. So, as I was mentioning, uh, there is kind, some kind of qualification is required for an invention to be granted as a patent. Okay. So, what are those uh, requirements? So, if you see in India, for example, uh, Indian Patent Office grants inventions related to a process or a product. Okay, it will not grant patents uh, which are uh, you know already known in nature. Also, if a substance is, I mean, a product is known, and if you are coming up with a new application for it, then that kind of patent applications will not be granted. For instance, we know that paracetamol from a long time. Okay. 
and it is an anti-inflammatory compound also useful for treating fever uh, body pains and all but if somebody comes up let's say assume that if somebody comes up with a paracetamol uh, is useful for treating some specific cancer okay but that will not be granted as a patent in india because in india process and product only are uh, allowed to be granted as a patent but however in us uh, those kind of application related uh, patents are also possible so for example if paracetamol is useful for treating some uh, specific cancer and if it is first time identified by an inventor then that kind of patents are allowed in us but not in india so this is due to the variations in the law of each country so indian patent law i mean indian patent act it does not permit such kind of incremental innovations so in indian patent office considers that uh, there is something there has to be something new it should not supposed to be an incremental innovation uh, as a qualification to be granted as a patent so uh, that is where in india only process and product related inventions will be granted as a patent okay next coming to the common aspects across the globe these three uh, things are mandatory to be qualified of an uh, to uh, qualify any invention as a patent so first thing is uh, novelty uh, so an invention should be novel in nature which means it should be new in nature non obviousness so it should uh, supposed to be uh, inventive uh, in its nature so it should not have been obvious for a person skilled in the uh, skilled in the art when they combine two aspects they can come up with a, an invention in those cases if something is appears to be obvious at least we need to show uh, uh, technical advancement i mean like uh, significance uh, development or improvement uh, in the uh, invention feature or application okay utility <coughs> so utility in the sense like it should supposed to have an industrial application if you are coming up with an invention it should have some kind of application in the industry so if it is not having any industrial application of course it does not make sense to grant it as a patent right so in that context so these three things novelty non obviousness and utility are three important uh, requirement uh, for patentability of any invention okay so this these three are uh, similar in most of the geographies geographies in this is countries so across the globe primarily these things will be uh, taken care uh, so if any invention complies with these three things then only it will be qualified to be granted as a patent apart from this uh, each country has their own specific uh, patent act and accordingly they will uh, see some other aspects also for example in india apart from these three things novelty non obviousness and utility an invention should not fall under sections 3 and 4 so these are subject eligible uh, subject matter eligibility things so uh, subject matter eligibility is jurisdiction specific for example in india section 4 talks about the atomic energy related uh, things okay so like something related to you know bomb uh, preparation of bombs method of manufacturing bombs all these kind of things related to anything atomic energy those things are not permitted to be granted as a patent in india and also se- section 3 talks about like you know inventions which are frivolous in nature inventions which are related to the new use of known substance inventions related to the method of treatment so these things are not patentable as per the provisions of section 3 and section 4 of indian patent act so if any invention to be qualify as a you know uh, patentable subject matter these things needs to be uh, taken into consideration and accordingly patent office uh, will examine the application and they will grant the patent if these things are all satisfied uh, according to the requirements of patent okay now we will see some uh, illustrations uh, for example uh, i mean like pictorial representation is always good so i thought to uh, put one slide uh, to demonstrate what is now for example in this case if you see this is a tractor and here the uh, this is like a prior art i mean something which is known for everyone okay that is called prior art Okay, now the invention is tractor with automatic sprayer. So this tractor is having the capability to spray the uh, any kind of you know liquid such as pesticide or some kind of uh, uh, you know fertilizer. All these things it can spray. So now if you see the feature, 
there is something called automatic sprayer that is coming up with the invention and hence you know this qualifies as a novelty so this feature is extra here and because of this extra feature this uh, particular uh, instrument or tractor is getting the novelty feature now let us see what is inventive step okay <coughs> so uh, usually we know that the spraying can be done uh, manually also right so but let's say if we are doing it uh, spraying manually let's say it takes one day time and if you are coming up with an invention uh, a tractor with automatic sprayer similar amount of area you can spray uh, within five hours so is it giving some kind of technical advan advantage for us and there is an advancement and we are able to reduce the number of hours and also laborious task to be handled by a human being is also getting reduced so in view of these kind of advantages associated with the uh, uh, invention so this qualifies an inventive feature and of course if you see industrial application needless to say that it has an industrial application that it can spray the pesticide or fertilizer to all the trees and as you know uh, crop of a product can be uh, crop of an uh, you know uh, 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 crop or yield of the fruits uh, all those things can be improved so with this kind of device so that is where you know we need to see whenever we are coming up with an invention whether it has these all three features like novelty non uh, non obviousness or inventive step and industrial application then it will qualify as a patent to be granted uh, for any invention now i was referring about you know product and process only are granted in india and you know use will not be granted so this is a simple slide where i wanted to show what are product and what are processes and what are uses uh, which are allowed which are not allowed so in case of india indian patent office allows genes proteins vaccines compounds compositions medical devices apparatus they consider all these things as a product and they allow them to uh, uh, you know grant as a patent provided they meet the requirements of the patentability that is novelty industrial application uh, inventive step all those things and then the second one is process process for producing any of those above above means these genes proteins vaccines devices apparatus etc and method of manufacturing the device and uh, apparatus so these product and process these kind of things are allowed okay in india as i said use things are not allowed uh, only in a few few countries will allow few countries does not allow okay so next moving on to the side so now we will quickly get into the uh, patent drafting related aspect so patent drafting is very important thing because it's a techno legal document so when i am saying techno legal document you can uh, you know split the word and see what is techno legal technical plus legal document okay techno legal document so technical means it contains an invention so it is technical in nature for example you are coming up with a compound for uh, compound um, having some kind of marquis structure or a composition having two uh, you know chem uh, chemical ingredients then it becomes an invention okay so it talks about the document talks about technical uh, aspects of it and then we are telling also a legal document why it is a legal document because uh, whatever the patent that will be granted is as per the provisions of the indian patent act so these acts are uh, you know legal in nature so whatever the invention that we are uh, putting in the form of a patent application it has to be drafted in such a way that it has to meet the criteria or conditions that are essential uh to uh, you know uh, qualify both as a uh, uh, technical technically it should be sound and legally also it should be sound so you need to consider a uh, lot of aspects uh, while drafting a patent application so i'll show you one by one what kind of things we need to consider and what kind of headings it will uh, patent application will have all those things i'll tell so uh, but before uh, drafting any application uh, what is the right way right way is to conduct a search to see whether your invention is actually patentable or not so something you are trying out uh, from last uh, let's say you know uh, you are trying out the invention from last 2 3 years and at that point of time you know that nobody has worked on it but at later point of time you know over the time of uh, one year or two years somebody would have published that similar kind of work okay so that time even though after 3 years you you don't know that somebody has worked on it 
and you worked on it and you when you came out and if you ask for you know a uh, patent for it the patent office will not give because somebody has come up with that invention already and it has publicly uh, you know published uh, by the patent office in those scenarios uh, is somebody having questions you know my brother is part of that Uh, so, if something is already published, then uh, definitely patent office cannot uh, grant such an invention as again, you know, as a patent. Okay. So uh, we need to conduct a search before filing an application. So you can ask them. I mean, what is the point uh, of conducting a search? Because uh, you know, uh, patenting involves huge amount of money. Patent filing, prosecution involves huge amount of money. Uh, so that is where you need to, you know. Uh, do search before uh, before filing the application so that we will get to know whether if your invention is patentable then only it is better to go ahead if it is not patentable then what is the point of spending so much money so that is the idea behind you know uh, conducting the patentability search so what we will do in that uh, after performing a search we will ascertain whether the invention is patentable or not so we will see whether it is uh, meeting the requirements Uh, before uh, applying the uh, before uh, applying for a patent we will see whether it is having novelty feature whether it is having inventive step feature whether it is having industrial application feature. so that we will uh, uh, do analysis so the, after that analysis uh, we will see like if it is patentable then we will suggest uh, you know applicant or the inventor to go ahead and file it as a patent okay so uh, these are the uh, these are the certain uh, things uh, which need to be done before uh, filing any application so uh, then uh, then next important thing is even uh, with this search we will get to know what kind of problems are actually there in the prior art okay so that we can put it in our uh, background section etc and what is the novelty in our invention and what is the uh, uh, what is obvious and what is not obvious and how it is not obvious and all those kind of things we can uh, you know enlist in our application uh, while drafting okay so let's see the content of uh, patent application so uh, what kind of aspects will be there i'll show one document also uh, of your uh, college uh, professor only dr shushan kareti uh, uh, their uh, presentation uh, their uh, patent application got granted i'll show all the details uh, how uh, the document looks like and all you will get an idea so the patent application contains title field of the invention background of the invention objects summary of the invention brief description of drawings detailed description claims so claims are the important component so uh, that is where you get protection for your invention okay and then abstract so if any drawings are applicable those those things will also be there i mean drawings is not like you know mandatory thing so uh, for example uh, in case of uh, uh, applications wherever mechanical devices all those things are there their drawings becomes mandatory but otherwise it is not mandatory that you need to uh, always submit the drawings wherever illustrations uh, are possible in the form of drawings there you need to uh, submit drawings okay <coughs> Uh, so whenever we are uh, giving a title uh, for any kind of patent application uh, we need to consider uh, the following things uh, uh, into consideration uh, so what are those things sufficiently indicative of the subject matter so if we are talking about a compound uh, that that needs to be reflected in the title if you are uh, talking about a composition that needs to be reflected in the title so you have to clearly mention uh, whether you are telling about uh, so and so kind of like uh, benzothiazole compounds you are talking about uh, an invention related to benzothiazole compounds so then you need to uh, write in your title uh, compounds containing benzothiazole uh, scaffold something like that or else uh, benzothiazole compounds and their compositions and applications thereof so you have to define the title in a clear manner such that it uh, the title should reflect the what is about the invention okay and also it should disclose the specific features of the invention so which is more or less say what i told and then it should be brief ambiguous uh, it should not be ambiguous it should be uh, precise 
uh, it should be definite in nature. So, I mean, like uh, you should have given like benzothiazole compounds with uh, uh, you know chloro substitution with uh, alkyl substitution. Those are all things you need not to mention. Here. You can just do benzothiazole compounds, something like that. It, it uh, need not to be you know uh, very elaborate. And there is a limit also uh, with respect to the number of words. It should not have more than 15 words in the title. Okay. So uh, also it should be free from fancy expressions uh, like uh, um, I mean like uh, extraordinary. All those kind of terminologies are uh, you know not permitted. So, so uh, some uh, some terminologies like uh, inventor's name, the word patent, abbreviations, fancy words such as wash well soap. Universal rest easy, uh, patent chair. These are all things, such kind of uh, you know uh, expressions, fancy expressions also should not be permitted. So uh, as I was mentioning, it is a techno legal document, so it has its own impact even in the title also. So accordingly, it should be uh, drafted. And then field of language. So this is one of the uh, specific uh, uh, specific uh, feature uh, in the patent application where we talk about a brief subject matter of the invention and we also talk about the advantages of the invention here so what kind of applications uh, the invention uh, has and what kind of uh, utility it has and what kind of uh, you know um, like whether it is useful for treating some disease or for the purpose of diagnosis all those kind of uh, things we will mention so i mean users also we can mention uh, like if it is useful for treating some uh, this is like cancer or diabetes, all those things can be captured in the field of the image. So then uh, something called a background uh, where we uh, talk about the prior art of the uh, invention. So in the background section, we essentially uh, mention about the status of the technology with reference to the developments uh, in the field. For example, uh, we are talking about a, uh, a cancer related application where uh, you know if an inventor has come up with a compound having anti-cancer activity, uh, I mean it is almost like a new scaffold uh, which nobody has done uh, in the past and has several advantages. Uh, then in those cases what we will uh, put in the uh, background section, so we will tell like what kind of known compounds are there in the, uh, for treating the cancer. And what kind of advantages or disadvantages? Primarily, we need to focus on the disadvantages associated with those kind of compounds. And so, uh, how your compound is able to, you know, uh, overcome uh, that kind of uh, problems associated uh, with the uh, prior. Art. So you have you have to briefly mention improvement on existing product or process shots. For example, uh, uh, let's say uh, we will take about a composition. Okay, composition in the sense here uh, we'll have a, a chemical compound and along with the excipients etc. And we know it has a uh, tablet also. Okay, so that tablet is like um, uh, uh, three times in a day you have to take for treating any kind of disease. But uh, what if somebody comes up like once a daily formulation, like you know instead of taking three tablets, uh, three times, uh, I mean uh, one tablet, three times uh, a day. Instead of that, he, uh, if any inventor comes up with a product, uh, once a daily formulation, so one time, uh, you know, patient can take and no need of taking uh, other two times. So patient complaints also will get improved. Okay, so those kind of improvements we need to show. If we are having that kind of things also, uh, can come up as a uh, 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 patentable invention. So statement of the closest prior art. So we can tell what kind of uh, documents or inventions are closely associated with the invention, etc. So objects of the invention. Uh, we need to uh, talk about the technical problems associated with the existing technology uh, and necessity of our invention. So what kind of instead of uh, giving a uh, three times pill we can come up with a uh, one time pill. So that is the kind of advantage we will be getting. So summary of the invention. Uh, in the summary of the invention we will uh, briefly talk about the details of invention, uh, method of performing invention and novel features of the invention. So details of the invention means we will give all the details related to the 
uh, it mentioned like for example if there is a compound how you have prepared that compound and what kind of steps you have uh, you know uh, considered for synthesizing those compounds what kind of solvents you have employed what kind of process parameters you have considered all those things we will capture also we will uh, i mean that is called method of performing innovation again and also uh, we will also show if it is having some kind of application for treating any specific disease we will show the activity related details also so how we have performed the experiments on rats or mice or any kind of cell lines and uh, and how you have showed your activity details like for example if you wanted to show uh, cell line uh, cancer treatment activity uh, before the uh, treatment how the uh, cancer cell was looking I mean cell was looking like and after treating with the uh, uh, compound how the cell is looking like and some kind of parameters which are essential to uh, you know show the improvement in the activity uh, all of those things we can uh, compare sometimes even if required by the patent office we need to show comparative comparative data also like you know if something uh, you are coming up with the antibiotic okay and uh, antibiotics are there uh, you know like uh, it's been quite some time right so uh, like but today if you are coming up with new antibiotics so what kind of advantage this new antibiotic is having over the uh, past uh, known antibiotics so is it kind of having any kind of uh, advantage like uh, even like tetracycline resistant bacteria or any kind of other resistant bacteria can be treated with your compound so those kind of uh, details we need to present uh, in our application so uh, and also what are the novel aspects associated with your invention all these things can be uh, presented in the detailed description, uh, I mean, uh, although in the earlier section it was like a snapshot summary, here you need to elaborate everything about the invention, complete picture of the invention we need to give. Nature of improvements effects with the respect to the prior, uh, sufficient for a person's skill in the art to perform the invention, and in case of patent of addition, reference details of a patent application. So if it is a uh, slight improvement over uh, over the known patent, I mean, your own patent, then it can, uh, and if you are uh, doing some minor changes, you can go for a patent of addition. So in those cases, you have to give the details of the parent application in reference to drawings. And in case of examples, we need to give best method of performing the invention. Uh, I mean, uh, terms such as like vague uh, slang, words, that colloquism is objectionable. Uh, or they are objectionable in nature. For example, like greater than, less than, so it does not give any uh, quantification, right? So we need to quantify activity in terms of like, let's say, uh, my compound is active uh, uh, better than the known compound. What it does, it is better, but to what extent it is better? Like uh, the previously known compound uh, IZ50 is 50, and if your compound IZ50 is like uh, better than that, it is uh, better than 0.5 or better than 100 or better than 200. So that we need to quantify, that kind of data is required. So mere uh, terminology usage uh, in those cases is not allowed. And if uh, the invention employs any kind of biological material, and if it is not available in the public domain, then uh, that biological material needs to be uh, as a sample to be submitted to the uh, depository uh, service. So uh, there is something called MTCC in Chandigarh, in Intech, uh, Microbial Type Culture Collection and Gene Bank. Uh, there we need to uh, submit that. And also source and geographical origin of uh, that biological material also we need to provide. In case of sequence related inventions, uh, biological sequence, so we need to do sequence listing, uh, uh, so which should contain, uh, which should be part of our specification, uh, or even in electronic format also we can submit. One moment, please. I'll just get some more. So, uh, uh, as I was mentioning, there is something called drawing section also. In case of drawing section, uh, also drawing section uh, shall not appear in the description as such. It is special. Uh, so. It is a special illustration of the invention. 
So what we will do, we will uh, in the uh, patent application, we will mention like uh, what are the figures that are available, but we will attach drawings as a separate document along with the specification. Okay, but it, it is not as such part of the specification. So usually there is some uh, there is some specific requirement. Uh, these drawings should be uh, in A4 size sheets uh, and they should have margins of at least 4 cm on the top and left hand and 3 cm at bottom and right hand of every sheet. So, if, if, if these kind of dimensions are not followed while uh, filing drawings, then such kind of uh, you know uh, drawing sheets will be objected by the patent office. So, uh, they have to be sequentially or systematically numbered. That is, uh, so, uh, like first page should be uh, uh, on the top of the document. It has to be uh, it has to be written. Uh, it is page number one something. Like that. And also we have to provide the applicant name. So those things we need to consider. In the left hand top corner, the name of the applicant should be mentioned. In the right hand top corner, the number of sheets of drawings and the consecutive number of each sheet. So which means like if we are having four pages, uh, four pages of document uh, drawings then 1 by 4 in the first page, second page 2 by 4, like that we need to mention 3 by 4, 4 by 4, something like that, so that it gives a clarity even for the examiner while examining the application. In the right hand bottom corner, the signature of the applicant or the patent agent. So these, these are the certain requirements uh, which needs to be fulfilled uh, you know, while drafting the application uh, in the drawings uh, document section. So, <laughs> claims which is you know uh, considered as a heart of the application. So, it should define the contour of rights and scope of legal protection. So, like uh, what exactly you are trying to claim for your invention? Are you trying for uh, you know a compound? Are trying you are, are you trying for a you know composition? Uh, those things you need to mention. Are, uh, whether you are trying for you know process for uh, preparing something. So, those things you need to clearly capture in the claims. And so this is a, I mean, claim section is a critical part of any patent application. It should be, uh, claim should be drafted to cover all the aspects uh, that are, you know, distinguishable from the prior art. So usually what courts look at uh, when they make infringement determination, uh, determinations, uh, these claims are like, you know, essentially uh, are critically important. So uh, at most care needs to be taken uh, while drafting the claims. Uh, so we have seen, uh, you know, uh, in our uh, experience, a uh, lot of uh, uh, you know some of the drafters they draft in such a way that you know it will not comply the requirements of uh, claim section what in accordance to it has to be drafted and uh, at later point of time during the examination of the application they had they had they face a lot of problems and they transfer those matters to us and they ask us to fix the issues uh, whatever has happened uh, earlier so it is very important uh, to you know uh, draft the claims of any application uh, in a manner such that it is complain it should be in compliance with the requirements of the uh, patent act so again abstract section so where we you know pro provide the uh, uh, technical information on the invention it constitutes an efficient instrument for the purposes of searching so generally whenever people are searching uh, so we also mentioned no, like before uh, filing an application or drafting an application we will perform a search. So generally search people will perform for a quick analysis, uh, title, abstract and claims. These three things will be uh, considered and they perform a search. So that you know uh, you need not to review the entire specification uh, unless and until it is required. Because the crux of the invention will be captured in these three, uh, three things. right? Because title contains the summary of what you are looking for. Uh, I mean, like a uh, very precise summary within 15 words. And abstract should be within 150 words. So it is a detailed aspect. Uh, and claims is like more detailed way. So then there is no point to go to, uh, there is no point to consider uh, the descriptions, uh, description section at the time of performing search. But while analyzing the document, you need to consider even a, des a description section. Because once you feel that, you know, based on the title, abstract claims, if you feel that any document is more relevant, then considering that, you can again look into the description section. So, it should uh, define the technical field, whether it uh, relates to chemical sciences or pharmaceutical sciences or it relates to biological sciences or mechanical engineering or material chemistry 
so these things we need to capture in the abstract and we also uh, you know uh, in a few words we need to define what kind of solution you are providing to the existing technical problem okay we, uh, in the previous case we saw what is the problem like a tractor was there and sprayer was there if manually if a person has to spray it it takes uh, one day and uh, you know what kind of advantage you are getting here reduction in the number of hours and we are improving the efficiency of spray so that is the kind of problem solution approach that we need to provide uh, in a small uh, in a few words in the abstract section and also if uh, the invention relates to a chemical formula then chemical compounds we need to provide chemical formula usually abstract uh, uh, needs to be drafted in such the uh, in such that it should not have more than 150 so after drafting an application uh, what we will do so we will see quickly like what happens actually with, uh, to the fate of an application so uh, i was mentioning like prior art search we need to perform so where we can get to know whether the invention is patentable or not by that analysis and then we will go uh, for drafting of the application and after drafting of the application we will file it with the indian patent office and then it will undergo several stages called prosecution prosecution means from the time of filing of application till the grant of application that stage is called prosecution stage okay so here exam publication of the document happens and examination of the uh, uh, application by the uh, patent office examiner uh, will happen and then we will provide our reply all those things i'll uh, provide in detail in the uh, upcoming slides and then after the grant of application so there is something called uh, uh, registration of the patent and then renewal of the patent so every year we need to uh, renewal our patent for 20 years uh, so that you know um, the active uh, status will be maintained for the application okay this is the uh, patent uh, process uh, proce uh, patenting process contain uh, different phases now uh, so i was referring about the filing stage right after drafting the application then we have to go for uh, filing the application so if your invention is conceptualized just conceptualized and you do not have complete data of the invention then you should go for provisional application file but if you have the complete information about the invention then you can directly go for complete application file so what is the advantage of filing provisional application so the uh, point is once your uh, summary of the invention is uh, filed as a you know provisional application so your priority uh, date will be blocked from that date so within one year you have to file again complete application if you are not filing directly complete application so first if you are filing provisional application then within one year you need to file complete application so this complete application essentially should contain the complete data about your application like any kind of activity details or toxicity details whatever that you wanted to capture advantages associated with with it or comparative studies any kind of additional data that you wanted to include at this point of time uh, uh, while filing the complete complete application we need to include at later point of time usually except the comparative data uh, patent office does not allow uh, any data to include uh, in the uh, complete application okay for filing uh, official uh, filing fee for uh, patent office uh, is like for large entity it is 8000 rupees uh, for filing uh, application uh, for uh, that is filing fee and then uh, 20000 rupees for request for examination but in case of uh, you know startups and uh, um, individual persons educational institutes all these things, there are some kind of uh, benefits now uh, so for educational institutes uh, recently patent office has reduced the fee earlier it was like uh, you know um, large entity fee only uh, they had to uh, pay but now uh, because of uh, you know certain policy uh, things Uh, fees has been reduced like uh, earlier whatever the individual person supposed to pay uh, for filing an application similar amount of fee now even educational institute also pays okay so that is a kind of uh, reduction that they have brought in to you know uh, encourage educational institute to file more patents so that is the idea behind uh, these things uh, and then uh, so technically uh, a document uh, uh, i mean like patent office has given a limit like uh, 30 pages and 10 claims are uh, considered within this 8000 rupees filing fee beyond that if uh, there are more pages and claims then additional fee needs to be paid 
so uh, as i was mentioning for startups educational institutions there is a reduced official fee and we will see uh, quickly uh, whatever that we understood uh, with respect to the uh, you know um, i mentioned no patent uh, patenting applications phases that in a detailed way we will see what will happen so when we file uh, when we wanted to work on invention like uh, for filing of an application then we need to first go for a patentability search then understand whether invention is patentable or not if the invention is patentable of course you can go ahead for drafting the application but if your invention is not patentable then what you need to do because you would have already put an effort right you cannot let go of that effort like already you would have spent 3 years 4 years to come up with an invention you cannot just uh, you know go somebody has worked on this uh, on this invention i cannot work on this you cannot let go of it like that okay so you need to tweak around uh, the invention like uh, you need to see like you know if i do some changes on my compounds or if i add, attach some additional groups can i make it like you know novel over the existing thing and whether it will have certain advantages so see see for example if you have developed a compound by using multi step synthesis like uh, five six step synthesis and you got compound but apparently that compound is also done by somebody six months before and now you attach some other group to it uh i mean by thinking in a logical manner like uh, you can apply either computer aided drug design studies or being a person skilled in the art uh, with your chemical intuition knowledge you can attach some other groups or if it is a composition related patent you know uh, add some other ingredients or excipients which can you know improve the properties of the composition properties in the sense therapeutic properties not the uh, you know mere physical properties so it has to show some kind of therapeutic improvement to try to work on it because uh, you know sometimes it is quite possible that you would have worked on it and somebody would have come up earlier before that so in those cases you need to tweak around the invention and you know develop a altogether uh, new set uh, compared to that uh, you know whatever that you have worked so based on that you can again go for drafting a patent application okay when patentability is clear yes then go for drafting if it is not clear try to work around that invention don't let go of it and again go for the patent application drafting and then after drafting the application what we will do we will go for uh, filing the application with the patent office so after uh, filing the application uh, from the date of filing uh, after 18 months that application will be published by the uh, indian patent office so what does this mean so there is a, there is something called journal patent office journal indian patent office journal so there also as well as uh, in the indian patent office website they will publish the application so i'll show you how the document and all looks like uh, okay otherwise i'll show you right away okay i'll i'll take this example only this is uh, dr shivshin reddy's application only so for example uh, indian patent office search if you go to the google click on the patent office website go to the application status put any application number whatever that you wanted to look for okay then if you put it put a code that we need to enter so this will give the entire application details like what is the application number and what kind of application ordinary application or pct application all those things and date of filing and who is the applicant so as you can see susan kareddy uh, linga reddy gari that is the applicant name uh, so title of the invention so the invention talks about diazinyl group containing chalcones and compositions and methods of making and using the same so we try to put the entire work in a title so that is the way how we need to track okay and field of invention you can see it is related to the pharmaceuticals so it also contains you know we have represented this case so this is our email id our office email id so ipo@kenspartners.com and so when request for examination was made when this application got published so you see the date it was filed on uh, in 2016 okay it is filed in the month uh, year of 2016 and it got published in the uh year 2018 okay so after filing it almost takes 18 months of uh, period to get it published in the patent office website and then 
we need to file request for examination. I will next come to that one. So this one request for examination. So after filing the application, we need to uh, request the patent office to examine our application. Okay. Otherwise, they will not examine. So, how uh, within how many uh, months or years we need to do this? We have to file the request for examination within 48 months from the date of filing provisional application. Okay. So, which means roughly four years. So, within four years, we can file request for examination. So, in this case, when we have filed the request for examination, so we filed the application in 2016, but we filed request for examination in 2017. Okay. So we need not, but we can also file immediately also. There is no um, need to wait. So it, all, it all depends on like, you know, uh, when we wanted to, you know, uh, prosecute the application. Depending on uh, many circumstances, uh, this thing will happen. So after, request, uh, after applying for request for examination, uh, patent office will examine the application. I mean, like, you know, in patent office, uh, there is a patent examiner, uh, patent controller will be there. So examiner will examine the application and he will forward his examination report to the uh, controller who will issue the examination report which is called as uh, first examination report, short in the English, short form it is called as FER. Okay, they will issue a uh, first, ex uh, Indian patent controller will issue a first examination report. So within six months from the date of issuance of first examination report, we need to submit our response to the objections raised by the Indian patent exam. Okay. Now I'll show TRC for example in this case, first examination report in this case it was issued in 2019 by patent office. Okay. Then we have filed the uh, uh, response also that also I will show so if you go here there is something called view document section here you can find all the details related to this patent uh, application like uh, when this was filed and what is the subject matter in this application so there is a description section so in the description section if you click that one you can see what is the application you can see what is the title of this application who is the applicant and uh, what kind of technical field background section i was referring to how to draft a patent application so here you can see like how a uh, patent application looks like so this is the complete specification we have filed okay uh, so in 2016 we have filed and it got published in 2018 and this technical field background section we mentioned what kind of problems are there in the you know uh, prior art so we told here see uh, antimicrobial resistance is a serious concern is the problem with the known antimicrobial compounds in view of that uh, uh, your professor Dr. Shushankar Redigaru has come up with a diagonal group containing chalcon compounds okay so uh, here you can see what is the uh, structure of that compound like uh, what we have proposed uh, for this uh, particular uh, invention and uh, we have drafted a Marquish claim here a Marquish compound here and then we gave all the details and specific compounds so these are all certain specific compounds which he has prepared in the laboratory so all these compounds were prepared and details uh, that is the uh, summary section right i mean like uh, where you give a uh, statement of the disclosure summary of the invention we will give you. and then what we give we give detailed description like uh, how these compounds are prepared and working examples we have prepared what what kind of process parameters are employed to prepare these compounds so all these things and wherever they have applications like treating in so many diseases it has application so all those things we have given and we have given examples how to prepare these compounds so the way of uh, uh, synthesis like what kind of steps we have pursued while preparing these compounds all these things were taken see for example in this case uh, initially uh, uh, this compound uh, yeah. uh, so uh, four amino astrophenone this is this four amino astrophenone is subjected to uh, azurization in presence of sodium nitrate uh, so then it, this compound was produced and this compound was further uh, treated with formula 3 to produce compound formula 4 which is a charcoal uh, diagonal based charcoal and then again uh, this uh, this is diagonal compound sorry and then this aldehyde derivative 
was uh, treated uh, acetophenone derivative was treated with aldehyde derivative to produce the chunk so this is how uh, the synthesis was carried out so uh, in a similar way couple of compounds were synthesized so these are the list of compounds uh, which were prepared in this application and after that story did not complete there you need to show some kind of industrial application for it right so we have done some uh, i mean like your um, uh, professor has done biological activity studies also so he has done uh, some uh, uh, activity studies using uh, bacterial strains which he got from the intech uh, chandigarh and so he has done antibacterial activity by a different methods so he produced activity data here and uh, comparative data uh, also was produced i think that is there in the later slides he also uh, shown up the anti cancer activity of the uh, compounds uh, for uh, this uh, series of compounds and he has shown anti tb activity also uh, and then anti tb yeah so these are the things uh, which were uh, uh, presented in the description section and then here these are the claims so here briefly we have to tell this is about a compound okay we are talking about a compound and then specific compounds here broad genus of structures were considered here so we have uh, provided you know uh, markovich language of a uh, uh, few compounds like we have combined all the compounds in a single markovich formula and we try to draft it as a, uh, a markovich claim okay and then we mentioned what are the specific compounds and then what is the what is a uh, what is a kind of methodology that was adopted uh, to prepare this compound that we gave the uh, you know snapshot of uh, that and process related parameters and if there are any reagents or catalysts if they were used in the process those things we have mentioned here and uh, if any purification techniques were employed those things all these things were uh, mentioned okay then finally as i mentioned abstract so abstract it should contain see you can see here the present disclosure in the field of pharmaceutical and chemical sciences you need to tell uh, tell what kind of technology it is uh, having application so and uh, what kind of uh, specific aspects it comprises like medicinally important diagonal group containing chalcone based chemical molecules and methods for preparing it and compositions thereof and use of such molecules and compositions in the treatment of uh, diseases including bacterial infections tuberculosis cancer and combinations there so you can see the entire invention of so many pages whatever i have shown is reflected in five lines that's all that should be like uh, there should be a word limit because we should draft this in 150 words okay so in a short form we need to put whatever your invention is okay if this is beyond 150 words again it will be objected by the patent office okay if it is not capturing the important aspects that will also be objected by the patent office and if it is having any structure chemical formula i was mentioning so that chemical formula also we need to replace so this is how a techno legal document now this is whatever you saw so far is a techno legal document okay because it contains a technical aspects and also it follows certain legal requirements so uh, i mean like certain uh, way uh, i mean like method that patent office defines to draft an application so all these things were captured here so this is a techno legal document okay now we will see what happened to this application we just filed it in uh, 2016 right we filed it in 2016 here it shows the other date whatever has happened like 2016 we filed okay and then in 2017 uh, uh we filed a request for examination that is called form 18 and then examiner issued first examination report in 2019 okay before looking into what examiner has reported we will see here first we will complete this slide so issuance of examination report by patent office uh so if there are any objections raised by the uh, examiner then we need to respond to those objections within 6 months from the date of issuance of first examination report however because of any issues or circumstances unforeseen circumstances if the inventor is not able to respond to that uh, first examination within 6 months he has the opportunity to take an extension for 3 months by filing suitable forms and fees 
so that you know he can uh, get uh, he or uh, the company can get additional three months time so total nine months of time will be uh, available for a pay, uh, an inventor or an applicant to respond to the objections raised by the indian patent office so after okay uh, let us see uh, the case how whatever has happened in case of your professor's application so this was issued in 23 4 2019 okay and in the last page they will mention like by 23 10 2019 we have to file the response so six months deadline you can see this is the 10th month here it was issued in the fourth month so exactly within six months we need to file the response to the objections raised by the controller okay so here you can see the controller of patents dr subramanian sp so under his supervision some examiners would have uh, this application okay so these are the details related to application application number filing date who is the applicant all these things so here in the examination report they will give summary of your invention like uh, what has they observed they saw novelty they told that yes your invention is novel they agreed for it then they told inventive step is there for your invention they told no you don't have inventive step they told but is it true what they have analyzed true or uh, probably they need some kind of clarifications to it so that is where this examination first examination is uh, report responding to this first examination report is very critical so he agreed for novelty but the examiner did not agree for the inventive step and industrial applicability also he said yes you have industrial applicability but he told that you don't have inventive step uh, then he told the, there is some issues related to section 3d 3e like he told uh, non-patentability inventions like uh, you whatever you did is uh, already known substance uh, so like that something examiner has to but is it correct or not that we need to address like if it is uh, whatever examiner is saying correct then we need to you know uh, see like we have to agree right if it is true but if it is not true we should make the examiner to understand like what are the differences okay. so in this case what has happened uh, they have cited the prior art document so in this case they have so what has happened is in this particular case your professor has uh, published the research article on the same invention uh, so it happened in 2015 okay and within one year uh, your professor approached us and we filed the application so as per the provisions of the patent act the patent office provides within one year from the date of publication you can file a patent okay patent application after that your own application will become as a uh, become a priority okay let's say your uh, as i said we have when we have filed your application in 2016 we have filed this application Okay, 29-7-2016. This was published in 2015. So, if your professor would have approached us in 2017 to file this application, we would not be in a position to file this application. Because his own invention would act as a prior art to his uh, work or patent application. So, what has happened in this case? So, same work, whatever is published in the form of research article, he filed a patent. So, patent office without probably seeing uh, who is the inventor, who is the applicant, they have cited the same document as a prior. Then we told to the patent office, see this paper is of our uh, inventor only. This is something, you know, uh, uh, which was done by us. So, this is not a prior art as such because Indian patent office provides the opportunity to file a patent uh, uh, applicant within one year from the date of publication of his earlier work okay so that kind of uh, response we have uh, provided to the patent office so uh, that is where uh, you know patent office agreed with us um, i'll show you the response whatever that we have submitted to the patent office so we told uh, so this is as per section 31 so it says that an invention claimed in the uh, so if the application for patent is made by two and the first inventor are a person deriving title from him not later than 12 months 
after opening the uh, opening of the exhibition or the reading or publication of the paper as the case may be. So this is the kind of relevant section what we have quoted to the patent office. We told that so this invention was worked by our inventor. So we filed the application within 12 months. So it should be allowed. Then patent office was kind of agreed on that part. Okay. But then again they had a few reservations. Okay, we will see what will happen if, so we file the response, okay, uh, if, uh, uh, after filing the response, if patent of office agrees all with our, uh, you know, uh, arguments, then they will grant the application, okay, if they don't agree, they will issue something called hearing notice. Okay, so the examiner here issued a hearing notice. medical. So when this happened again in 2021. So see when application was filed in 2016 and uh, hearing notice happened in 12th month of uh, 2021. So December 21, uh, this hearing notice has come. This is the hearing notice. Okay, so here the controller was uh, different again. So here the controller uh, objected to the part of sufficiency of disclosure. So <coughs> what has happened in this case? We filed, uh, I mean I have shown the claims. Here. Okay. So we filed a Marquish formula here. Uh, but the examiner was like, you know, uh, this is capturing huge number of compounds. But you worked uh, on the specific compounds, so examiner told, I am ready to give these compounds, uh, but I don't, I cannot uh, guarantee for, you know, allowing this case, like that, uh, you know, examiner has pointed out. Okay, then again, we attended the hearing, in fact, your professor was also uh, there briefly on the call, uh, so then we have amended the claims, we told, uh, it's fine, uh, we will amend the claims. So, we will go for whatever we have since said, we will not go for broader thing, okay. So then this was allowed, this was granted. So patent certificate was issued in the month of February. So this is the patent certificate, you can see this is patent number of your professor and uh, here the patent D. So once, uh, so till the stage of grant of uh, your invention, you will be an applicant. But once your patent is granted, then you will become patentee. So in all initial pages, you will be referred as you know applicant only. But from here onwards, you will be referred as a patentee. Okay. So then intimation of grant was also issued. So in this also, they will tell what is your title and how many claims are there, who is the applicant, what is your patent number, when your patent was issued. Uh, I mean date of patent. C. Here, if you see date of patent means it is showing 2016. So your, uh, but your professor patent grant got granted in uh, 24th February 2022. So almost uh, kind of six years, right? So from 2000, now the question is whether your uh, professor gets rights from 2016 or 2022. You know, uh, but since uh, the patent got granted although in 2022. His rights were blocked from 2016, so his rights will be actually from 2016 onwards. Okay, so for 20 years, if he maintains the uh, application uh, the, uh, patent by paying renewal fee, he'll be having protection for this invention till 2036. So nobody can work on this invention without his permission. Okay, so that is the kind of protection he gets. So this is what has happened so after the uh, you know satisfying the examiner's requirements uh, application will be granted and a uh, letter of patent document will be issued and we need to file you know um, a renewal fee uh, every year so this is the kind of uh, patenting uh, system and procedure uh, whatever is uh, there for you know for after filing of an application and uh, so uh, like we were talking about patent office, patent examiner and all right. So but let us see where is our patent office in India and uh, do we have one office or multiple offices or let's see that. So overview if you see uh, patent office headquarters at Kolkata. So that is the head patent office and we have other offices in Mumbai, Chennai and Delhi. So uh, I mean if you see the hierarchy there will be a controller general 
and uh, under him there will be controllers under controllers again examiners will be there so these examiners will be reviewing the uh, application when it is filed for a uh, you know patent and they will issue a first examination report and that will be reviewed by the controller and he will issue finally yeah, to the applicant so that is how it works so uh, this is you know snapshot of indian patent office and uh, working system in so in the prosecution stage i i, I think already told all these points like application will be published after <laughs> the examination uh, the examiner will issue the first examination report and they file responsibility in six months and the extension is possible and the hearing is uh, if required then you know a patent office issues a hearing notice and if the examiner is satisfied with our all arguments then he will grant the patent otherwise he will reject the uh, application so that's how the prosecution stage happens so we saw drafting and we saw prosecution and this was the case study i think before entering into this slide only i showed everything already so this is application number filed on this day title munir sir uh, is the date uh, uh, dr shushankar digaru is the applicant. and uh, reference number of this or uh, you know company so now what uh, your professor should do so he has to maintain the patent so uh, what is the maintenance period 20 years so he has to pay renewal fee every year within the due date so if the uh, renewal fee is not paid patent will get you get lapse okay so i mean but there is a opportunity you need not to pay it like uh, one every year every year you can pay at one shot also okay that, that is also possible so this is how uh, you know uh, how an invention starts and goes for the prosecution and goes for uh, uh, grant and then you know maintenance so this is the whole story how the patent uh, you know goes for uh, different uh, goes in a different phases so your professor was asking to present one case law for us uh, that shivshank kadigar he told me like uh, you know present some case laws our student will get uh, more ideas about this so i thought to present a uh, uh, well known uh, turmeric uh, uh, related uh, patent uh, revocation which happened in uh, us pto us pto in the sense us patent office okay uh, so there was a patent application filed in uh, us pto on turmeric okay so we know that turmeric uh, is useful for treating you know kind of uh, small cuts wounds all these things that's like uh, from the knowledge of ayurveda uh, we know all those things but apparently what has happened us has granted a patent uh, so i was telling you no know, something if it is known what it is called it is prior art whether it is uh, you know um, uh, what it is called Uh, if the patent is there or research article is there or not does not matter if it is known and if it is documented somewhere then it is considered as a prior art so in all our ayurveda books they use uh, this uh, you know turmeric as a kind of uh, you know antibacterial or antiseptic even we study in all our pharmacognosy subject also right turmeric is yes, antiseptic yes, 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 yes. so we know that as a uh, Um, uh, like uh, all uh, indians uh, know that uh, turmeric will be it is a kind of grandma recipe for treating uh, all kind of small cuts and wounds uh, at every home whenever we are kids we are playing at home okay, if yeah, we yeah, get yeah, a small yeah, incision or a cut yeah, yeah. our grandma applies immediately turmeric on it right so we know that because of its antiseptic properties we use for it but what has happened uh, somebody in us uh, filed a patent uh, like das et al okay they filed uh, application patent application on turmeric saying that it has a wound healing properties so us patent office also granted it okay so then what has happened uh, csir you know right csir body council of science uh, scientific industry and research so this is a government uh, organization so csir challenged this application so you know uh, we have represented uh, this uh, government organization uh i mean like our firm k and s partners has represented uh, csir and we requested the us patent office to re examine this application we told the patent office that we have granted patent but we want you to re examine this because based on our knowledge we know that this is not a valid thing for a patent uh, to be uh, granted as a patent because in india it is known uh, that turmeric is known to have you know wound healing properties 
already we know that so in that context because it's you know uh, knowledge that what we got from ayurveda yeah. and if somebody just, uh, just wanted so what what is the fate of this one you know uh, like if his, his patent is not revoked let's say revoked in the sense cancelled okay if his patent is not cancelled we can't use turmeric for uh, you know even for small cuts and wounds wounds, uh, wounds also that is the uh, consequence of this patent so that is where you know uh, csr this is a government body uh, we have repre- uh, the uh, i mean like uh, we have represented csr for uh, csr for this landmark case and we asked the uh, us patent office to re examine the application and we have provided some of the prior art documents we told that you know this is already known in india we have done exhaustive preparation and search on the documented traditional knowledge we told that this is a traditional knowledge in india and we showed we gave to american patent office us patent office 32 key citations to support our case okay saying that you know turmeric is known from the ages for treating uh, cuts wounds or it has antiseptic properties to support that kind of you know statement we have given 32 documents okay and we gave even one prior art document that discloses the use of turmeric in umbilical cord issues in newborns I mean, newborn babies will be there no? so for them usually uh, umbilical cord will be you know incised right at the time from that is the connection from mother to uh, newborn baby right so after that uh, disconnecting that umbilical cord uh, this uh, turmeric was applied to heal that kind of wounds and all those things right that kind of document was also there so that was also submitted at the time of you know uh, patent revocation okay mm-hmm. and then even uh, this was something like uh, we had uh, our our uh, uh, partners uh, our uh, you know uh, lawyers have done they uh, went to uh, one university uh, and they got some document which is of 1879 you can see the here this is a uh, urdu article uh, in that it was published the uh, benefits of turmeric uh, so it says haldi in hindi it is called haldi you know right so uh, taken directly as a blood purifier so this document which is in urdu it uh, tells all these points so this was translated okay uh, for the purpose of this patent revocation our institute uh took the help of you know one translator and uh we got this document translated this is uh, scanned copy we have taken from that university okay so uh it can be taken according to this uh, document this uh, haldi powder can be taken directly as a purifier and it helps in curing the jaundice and it uh, also works as a analgesic anti inflammatory it is an extract a best tonic for eyesight it has wound healing and wound infection uh, treating wound infection uh, infections so these are all the properties that were documented in 1879 and we told us patent office see already these things were known in the prior art see probably what would have happened is us patent office uh, searched only english documents that could be one case uh, or we don't know like what has happened actually at the us pto uh, examination thing but finally we showed all these things Okay. Then there were actually six claims were granted by the U.S. Patent Office. After we submitting this proof, then U.S. Patent Office uh, re-examined this application, and all six claims, whatever has been failed, were revoked, which means cancelled. That patent was cancelled. Uh, so he was like, uh, I mean, he, this person also, Suman Kedas, was an inventor uh, who filed the application, uh, University of Mississippi Medical Center. So he was, I think, uh, as a part of uh, this institute, he was working there, and they filed the application, and uh, it got granted, and then we asked the U.S. Patent Office to re-examine, and we submitted documents why that invention is not patentable then indian patent uh, sorry us patent office considered our request and they performed the examination and they saw whether what we are telling is correct or not then they have cancelled all the claims of the us patent so that's how you know uh, so it is very critical to understand the technical aspects 
when you are working with a patient. So uh, that's all I wanted to say. I thought uh, I'll share one case, you know, or landmark case in this regard. Uh, thank you for your kind attention. If at all you have any queries, uh, please let me know. Uh, happy to take. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. I request the participants, sir. If there are any questions, please kindly interact with the resource person. Sir, there is a one question from uh, Naveen, sir. Uh, okay. How do we submit our invention to patent office or how do we conduct them? Is there any type of website available? So, see, uh, if you wanted to carry out search, uh, uh, you know, there are patent office websites are there, like Indian patent office website, US patent office website, all are there. You can do uh, search on your own uh, using these patent office websites. Even Google patents are also there. There also you can perform the search. Uh, but you know, uh, to get a broad coverage of all these things, uh, there are certain commercial databases which are available. These in these commercial databases, one can uh, you know they will cover all the patent office journals at one place so that search becomes very easy like the, there are some databases called Darwent Innovation, Questel Orbit all these things but they are pretty expensive okay so in that context if you want uh, any of uh, your invention need to be uh, you know searched before filing as application either you can do uh, on your own or you can approach us we can also do on behalf of you uh, and we can give you know our report also search report like whether your invention is patentable or not all those things can be done thank you very much sir again yeah. uh, thank you for briefing out uh, the valuable speech and making us more familiar in uh, patent drafting and prosecution and uh, thank you for covering about uh, uh, very detail uh, how to draft a patent uh, and what care should be taken uh, uh, while drafting the patent including with the phases of the patent how to come across uh, the questionnaire uh, which was asked. So thank you very much sir again. Uh, sir with, uh, with the permission of convener. Mr. Munir, Dr. Munir, there is sir. a query I think. Mm, uh, yes, sir. Check that. yes sir. Sir there is one more query sir. Uh, is it necessary to apply for life saving drugs like uh, Remdesivir or can we stop this? See I think this is a tricky question. So there is something called innovation or a requirement. Okay. Uh, see, uh, this is something uh, where, based on the circumstances, uh, courts will uh, sometimes take judicial decision uh, in granting uh, those kind of things. Like uh, uh, you know, if it is actually as per the provisions of uh, uh, provisions of the act there is something called uh, you know in case of emergencies and all uh, you know government take government can central government can take certain decisions okay so if they want they can you know for temporary phase or they can do some kind of changes and they can ask to issue or uh, you know compulsory license also if there is a requirement uh, in the public so they can do some uh, decisions uh, they can take some decisions but you know uh, it is, you know, on a need basis, probably it works. Uh, so see, uh, if we if we stop them for patenting, then who will do innovation? That is also a question. If you are not getting royalty or whatever the contribution that you are making, if you are not getting, you know, reward for it in the form of monopoly, it will also not work, right? So because they also spend so much money, they can't just come out with a drug, right? They have, they will be having their own R and D team. They have to do animal studies. They have to do, you know, clini uh, clinical trials. So much money is involved. If there is any toxicity, just whatever the money that applicant spends will go waste, right? So they also want that money to, you know, get back and whatever that, uh, not only the money, the efforts, energy, or technical contribution, whatever that they have done for the uh, invention, that they will uh, see to uh, get some returns out of it. Okay. So that is where uh, you know you need to boost such kind of innovations that is where you know patent will be granted but you know if there is an emergency condition then government can intervene in those cases they will see what is the best to do okay. yeah, but uh, you know if we stop giving uh, patents also then innovations will not come.
that is also we need to see so we need to bring a kind of you know barrier i mean like a striking balance between both the things so that's that's the government also intervenes wherever it is required thank you sir i think yeah uh, now with the permission of uh, convener and the uh, organizing secretary uh, we would like to felicitate you sir virtually so please kindly accept our uh, virtual felicitation mm -hmm. thank you Thanks for uh, honoring me. Slide model, and then yeah. very pleased. Uh, it's a it's been a quite uh, pleasant experience. Always uh, sharing my thoughts, knowledge with the uh, you know uh, your college team and working with your professors. Uh, I'm happy about that. Uh, I'll be uh, happy to you know going forward also going forward also I'll be uh, happy to give uh, and participate in such kind of sessions. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Again, now I request the uh, professor S. P. Sudesh Kumar, sir, to, to kindly uh, talk about this uh, session, sir. And uh, give a uh, few suggestions to the, all the participants. Yes. Please, sir. Dear delegates and participants, we are happy to conclude the session, the impact lecture, offered by I mean assisted by A. C. D. I hope the information provided by Dr. Ravi Shankar and even Dr. Kasipi Garu in relation to Uh, the knowledge regarding the innovation and intellectual property rights and is useful at various levels even at the b farm level also it is useful as for the syllabus in this regard i thank all the delegates and participants for attending the this important lecture and at the same time we expect the same cooperation in future for programs conducted by src thank you in this regard now i uh, request yes, dr dastagiri uh, to go proceed with the Vote of thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I, Dr. Vai Dastagiri, propose vote of thanks to this webinar. I must mention our deep sense of appreciation for Dr. V. Ravi Shankar for delivering the topic "Impact of Recent Innovations in Drug Device Combination and Products in Vaccines and Pharmaceuticals," and we thank. Dr. Yuganjaneelu sir, for being with us, with us and support us despite this busy schedule, and give a lecture on introduction to patent drafting and prosecution. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I would like to privilege thanks to Dr. Shantiramur sir, Chairman Arjun Group of Institutions, for providing opportunity to conduct AICT, IAC Impact. lecture series on team innovation and ipr in addition i added thanks for our director of administration arjun group of institution dr dv ashok kumar sir for his constant support for conducting impact lecture sessions next i would like to heartfelt thank to our dynamic principal dr c madhusudan sethi sir for initiation guidance and encourage to organize this type of webinars I would like to privilege my heartfelt thanks to Dr. S. V. Suresh Kumar Sir, Professor and HOD Department of Pharmaceutics, and Organizing Committee Members Dr. L. Shivashankar Reddy Sir and Dr. Pune Sir and Pradeep Kumar for their continuous efforts for successful completion of webinar. Last but not least, I would like to thank all the delegates for your gracious presence. and your patience and making this webinar success thank you thank you sir for giving this opportunity yevarina camera mundara bitte bitte thank you again sir uh, hope all the participants will show same interest uh, to participate uh, in the forthcoming uh, either conferences seminars uh, and there is one more lecture uh, impact lecture series uh, mostly uh, we expect the July month in the first week of July, and we expect all the delegates and the all through the uh, India who has shown much interest uh, in participating of this uh, in, uh, lecture impact series, uh, so which is uh, being uh, conducted in the collaboration with the uh, AICTE, and hope uh, 
uh, you have gained a knowledge uh, uh, by participating through this uh, impact lecture series. Sir. Thank you uh, very much again to all the delegates. Sir. Thank you. Sir. Excuse me, sir. Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. You are in a Kajera mail. In the container, session I've been. Hello, sir. Recording our page.